Earth was born in fire. Fires within its seething heart. And great balls of rock and ice that exploded in fiery impact. One was almost as big as Mars, and when it struck Earth, it formed the moon. But not to worry, little one, because those fireballs were part of the chaotic early solar system. In the billions of years since, the other worlds swept free the lanes of their orbits. So our solar system is a relatively peaceful place now. After its first half billion years, Earth was spinning faster than it does today. The days were shorter, merely six hours long. The moon was 10 times closer, and its gravitational grip on the young planet was much stronger. The shores of the land were battered by the largest tidal waves the world has ever known, a thousand times greater than they are today. The infant Earth was no place for us then. The atmosphere was mostly carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia, a toxic environment for our kind of life. We don't know what the climate was like back then, but scientists reason that the thick, hazy atmosphere trapped the heat of the Earth and made it scorching hot. Another kind of life, tiny creatures that could shrug off the methane and eat carbon dioxide and sunlight for breakfast, found a way to make a living in the ocean. And those scrappy little cyanobacteria, as they're known, remade the whole planet. By gobbling up the carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen, they turned the sky blue. All that oxygen destroyed the methane shroud that enveloped our planet. And it was cool. Not as cool as it is now, but more like a really hot summer day year round. And then something wonderful happened. The atoms of oxygen that the tiny creatures in the ocean produced began to gather high above the world in the sky. And a new kind of molecule was made, ozone. It created an invisible canopy against those rays of the sun that were lethal. Now, for the first time, life was free to leave the oceans for the land. And before long, life seized these new opportunities. A wild variety of shapes and sizes evolved as adaptations to these new habitats. And there were ears, and noses, and wings. I'd like you to meet a fellow Earthling, a very distant relative of yours. You've only been here a day, but beetles have been here for 300 million years, and the changes they've seen of this world. Our kind has only been here for a fraction of that amount of time, 11 o'clock on New Year's Eve of the cosmic year. That's when our ancestors stood up for the first time we called them Homo erectus for that reason. They were no longer forced to stare at the mud beneath their feet. Now, they could look up and see the stars. And their hands were free to change the world. They began to move around, to explore, daring to risk everything to get to unknown places. They were brave, and their blood runs in your veins. Some of them explored the vast continent of Africa. Others ranged north, taking a left turn into Europe. There is evidence that they would later evolve into the lost people we call Neanderthals. We have no idea what they called themselves, but we named them after the place in Germany where we first discovered their ancient remains. Another, even more mysterious branch of our family took a right turn into Asia and they evolved into people we call the Denisovans. But you and I, and all our other human brothers and sisters, were mainly descended from the people who stayed in Africa for another million and a half years. 
Sure, most of us have a little blood from the other branches of the family, but we are mostly the children of Africa. To see how our kind spread out around the planet, we have to go even closer to midnight, 1155, or about 150,000 years ago. It is now a minute and a half to midnight. Until about 40,000 years ago, our Neanderthal relatives lived very much as we did. They had bigger brains than we do and were brawnier, but they did many of the things that we think of as being human. Most of us still carry some tiny portion of their genes inside us. But there are no more living Neanderthals today, nor are there any of our other cousins, the Denisovans. When this happens, when a whole species vanishes, we call it extinction. It's the end of a road that began four billion years ago with the origin of life. 